what do I do? I've told you how I physically take photos. And these best practices, they, they help me to get sharp handheld photos. I compose using the rule of thirds. The grid lines help me capture a building's outline and the horizontal lines help me to get the building level and the vertical lines help me to get the building upright and that saves me a ton of time later when I'm processing my photos. It's a dead simple thing and it's a dead helpful thing. I use natural light plus the lighting designed and built into the buildings. These give me the best light for my work. I don't use artificial lights because the lighting in building has been designed for the people who live, work and use the buildings and that's what I want to convey in my photos which is why I don't introduce any of the lights. Now that might sound like a cop out to make life easier for myself but that's where my photography has evolved to and I'm more than comfortable with that. I use AV mode on my Canon 6D DSLR camera, I set the aperture and the camera sets the shutter. I use the shutter speed that the camera chooses. My camera's on a tripod, so I don't need to worry about the shutter speed unless there's fast moving clouds, trees, rivers, or other similar objects. I take 99% of my photos with my camera on a tripod, so shutter speed is just not an issue to me. And I use auto bracketing, taking three photos with different exposures which are merged together later in Lightroom. This is also called high dynamic range photography, but if you call it auto bracketing, people will say, oh yeah, good work there. If you say you do HDR, the pitchforks will be out. Yep, still an issue. And of course I photograph buildings that are not moving, well, at least I hope they're not anyway. I also use auto white balance and raw format, raw image files, so I can change the white balance later. Well, it makes life easier for me, so why not? Okay, for my architectural photography work, I tend to focus a third into the scene and use an aperture of f8 most of the time, f16 if I've got something in the foreground that I want to get in the frame as well. And this is with a 17mm focal length. I do have other camera lenses, but I tend to stick with my Canon 17 to 40mm lens, it just works for me. And focusing a third in, it's not a bad rule of thumb, especially with a wide angle lens. Now, I know it's not that precise, but it gives you a start if you're not sure. And good old ISO. I use ISO 100. I only change from ISO 100 if I'm taking handheld photos, and the only way to get a shutter speed that is fast enough is to use a higher ISO. And I don't think I've ever used an ISO of more than 1600. I've used 200, I've used 400, I don't remember using 800. But I, I think I used 3200 once and, and the noise was horrendous. I think I was just experimenting with an old camera. But ISO 100, 200 if I need to, 400 if I need to, and not much more than that. And that's what I do. Yeah, I do take photos of my iPhone and I use the default camera app and, and that's it really. But I use my Canon 6D for my client work. This is the best camera I've ever owned. Even though it's 10 years old now, it still does a wonderful job for me. It doesn't have that many camera features, but this is part of why I love it, because I don't want them and I don't need them, so why would I spend money on a camera with things I'm not going to use? And I also love landscape photography, which is my taking photos for me time. And Between us, I, I take my landscape photos in pretty much the same way I take my, my architectural photos. There ain't much difference. But I do aim to produce high quality images every time I take photos. And the fewer photos I take, the better. If I can get one or two great photos, I'm happy. I don't take a lot of photos anymore, and I haven't done that for a long time. And that was the longest what do I do ever. But this is what I do.